Really? You gotta be kidding me. All right, so amidst a growing new car inventory and floor plan lines of credit that are costing dealers hundreds, if not uh, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, you still see car deals like these, Dad. Here is a Kia Forte, a 2024, an affordable vehicle, folks. An yes. affordable vehicle, $21,415, $1,000 off the top. This dealer, Dad, selling a Kia Forte, 2024, brand new for $20,415. Man. Except, dang it, we get all the way down to the total purchase. That's pre-doc fee, by the way. $29,594. You add in all the extras and all the tax and all that fun stuff. You have a $36,000 out the door price on what was a $21,415 MSRP well, vehicle. Well, can, can I take that GPS tracking system off? Because it says it's optional. Can I take the poly steel off and maybe the red alert? Oh, but the, I guess the that desert package you know, four thousand dollar <laughs> desert package you've talked about hey. on this show the freaking desert package and here it is man you you just never know when one of them jumping choyas is going to jump up at your car but you'll be protected okay uh the powder coated rims because you know who wouldn't want to spend three thousand dollars <laughs> to get powder coated wheels on their twenty one thousand dollar car i mean who wouldn't who 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 i i'm up for that and then well you can't forget that three thousand dollar extended service contract but thank goodness that's optional oh my god you know dealers kia dealers kia and hyundai dealers have never been, at least in the industry, have never been thought of in as as being on the cutting edge of anything. Uh, they've always been thought of as well being stuck in the '60s, '70s, and '80s. You know, uh, I am sure you would find a hard, you would be hard pressed to walk into a Kia or Hyundai dealership. Uh, threatening to buy a car and not being smacked across the head with a four square. I, I mean, they are, they, they are just stuck in the old ways of doing things in deceptive practices. It's just, it's what they've been known for. And it's, you know, it's because it was, it was uh, at the, when they first came out really inexpensive, auto brand that would appeal to people that a didn't have the money to buy a slightly better car and and b didn't have the credit to buy a slightly better car and so all these dealer principals were like you know licking their chops because these these are the kind of people that we can take advantage of and and that's what those dealerships have been known for in the industry and when you show that worksheet you can say, well, for good reason. Um, they haven't adjusted with the times. Most of them have not. Um, most of their, in, in many cases, their dealer principles um, were brought up in a different time um, and, and were able to justify doing all the, all the deceptive things that they do, and they feel okay about it. Um, you know, it would be nice for him to stop. Just stop. All right, folks, we will start here. Unfortunate news out of pickup truck land. Ford Chevrolet Ram crew cab pickups <laughs> fall short on IIHS. Crash test the 2023 Ford F-150, Chevy Silverado 1500, and Ram 1500 crew cab pickups were rated as, quote, poor in the Institute's revised moderate overlap front crash test. So we've got millions of these big old full-size pickup trucks on the road. And the headline in the industry publication, Automotive News Today, is that they all fell short. Not all, but Ford, Chevy, and Ram, their flagships, all fell short and were rated poor in the new overlap front crash test. What did, no I, say no. in the e what did I say in the email I sent to you about that? <laughs> I don't remember. What did you say? Um, what's big, bad, and popular and doesn't crash test well? Um, <laughs> you know, one of the most popular vehicles out there seem to be pickup trucks. Okay, so we have more Americans driving these pickup trucks that, well, if they hit each other, oh, that's a bad thing. It, it's a bad thing because it's not going to be as safe for them as the SUV they might have been driving or the sedan they might have been driving. It, it just, but 
we don't the buying public really doesn't seem to care they we want a pickup truck and how many times do we see pickup trucks on the road and and very rarely are they doing anything with the pickup truck that well a pickup truck was invented for in the first place which is to carry stuff which is to be a utility type vehicle and and people treat them as just well like these large luxury vehicles that just happen to have this open air space in the back you know that that we can throw our yeti cooler into and because you know it just wouldn't fit in the back seat uh, i just I don't, man, I say this way too often, but I just don't get it. I just <laughs> don't get it. I appreciate the Yeti cooler reference. You sound like someone who owns a pickup truck. So no, but it's, it's, it's sad when you see these IIHS crash test ratings and they're not good. It's especially sad when it's for the most popular vehicles being sold out there. Not, not yeah. just Ford, not just Ram, not just Chevy, all three, the three fastest selling most popular full-size pickup trucks so yeah that's unfortunate really you got to be kidding me number one let's go to really you got to be kidding me number two and i will be giving you a lot of uh, just dad facetime here in a moment we have dad yeah lucid yeah lucid face is tough emphasis on tough q3 earnings call after slow sales and price cuts the startup is expected to lose only three hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars for every air sedan it makes this year according to bloomberg intelligence on the upside lucid will present its new gravity crossover on november 16th estimates say they will only lose six hundred thousand dollars on no, I'm, I'm teasing there but dad <laughs> this is another example of an automaker that they, this, they this, it's a, yeah, yeah. This, I'm, this, I'm, this is this is my favorite example of nothing succeeds succeeds quite like failure. Um, but you know, the CEO might find himself out of a job soon because prior to this, they were losing about five hundred and fifty thousand dollars per vehicle sold, and that's down to three hundred and what was it, sixty four thousand. So he's knocked almost two hundred thousand dollars in losses off of the huge losses that they had. The, the the Saudi fund that backs this is they're going to look at this and go, oh, that's no good, you know. And this is the same guy they paid three hundred sixty nine million dollars to last year in in the earnings uh, compensation for him. I'm telling you, um, can, hey, would you do me a favor? Would you allow me to run Car Edge into the ground, but pay me way too much for doing it? <laughs> no, no, but I will. <laughs> I will give you the chance to do your third and final, really. You got to be kidding me. Probably the best one of the show, Dad. We have a dealer out here that is taking dealer markups to a whole new level. This is a Dodge dealer, Dad. Yes. I'm not going to say who, although some of you can maybe read what's on the screen. <clears throat> oh, I'm, I'm trying to read. I can't see the screen enough. Oh, Scroll you don't see where it, can... you don't you see where it be... says Dark Cars Assurance? <laughs> Oh, I, I didn't. Okay. So it's a, so are you suggesting it's a dark horse dealer? I have no clue. This was just posted on the internet. You can't necessarily yeah. believe everything on the internet. Um, yes. You've got that a vehicle, a Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. Yes. For $386,000. And we got to be careful here. Dark Cars is one of the dealer groups that has threatened to uh, take legal action against Car Edge uh, for who knows what reason. So I'm going to be very careful, careful here. Everything that we say in the next segment is our opinion. Yes. This is information on the internet, Dark Cars. So please do not come after us. It's posted on the internet. We It was shared with us. So please do not come after us. We're just going to make some commentary on the potential that one of your dealerships may be listing a Dodge vehicle for 386,000 big ones. Seems reasonable to me. You know, I think the only thing I would complain about is the wheel locks for $195. <laughs> uh, why? Why? Yeah. Dodge Hellcat, red eye, a black eye, green eye, blue eye. I don't care what <laughs> color eye it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> for for 300 and some thousand dollars, if you are actually considering buying it, get your head examined, <laughs> take your head out of your ass. I don't care. You're going to say to yourself, yeah, but in 50 years, this son of a gun is going to be worth like $50 million because it, it's the last Hellcat, red eye, ice vehicle. 
come on. And and then and then for dealership to, to suggest, well, we know it's going to be worth like, well, I don't know, a half a trillion dollars in 30 years or whatever. So we're only going to charge you $250,000 extra to buy it. All of you, between the dealership and any potential customers, take your heads out of your collective asses, move on with life, go find something else to piss away your money on. Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, y- you know, people. People just really need to, I was going to say, they really need to start using their heads. But <laughs> based, based on that, we know people don't. And and so I don't know why I rant and rave and rail about these things, because there's some stupid ass that's going to go out there and buy that. And, and, and that stupid ass might think to himself, well, I got a hell of a deal because I talked them down to $300,000. Exactly. Exactly. That's the aspect of this that pains me the most is that you advertise a quarter of a million dollar market adjustment. Yes. And if you end up only making a hundred and fifty thousand dollar market adjustment, last time I checked, that market adjustment, Dad, is air. It's literally just profit. Like that's all it is. And and I'm just guessing, but the salesperson that sells that, he ain't getting paid off of any of that. Okay, they're they're probably, you know, I'm just guessing. I never worked for dark cars, but I'm guessing they're just telling anybody, any salesperson that sells that, you're getting a flat commission. (laughs) And maybe it's $1,000, you know. Meanwhile, the the good folks at dark cars are just going to pocket, I don't know, an extra $150,000 in in profit. Uh, Yeah, so... Yeah, there's a couple people that are getting ripped off here. The salesperson who sells it, who isn't going to be able to participate in any of that extra profit. And I don't know, the dealership or the buyer that says, yeah, I I want to buy that. Those are the two people really getting ripped off here. And and I I don't know. I You know, I shouldn't say this, but if I was a salesperson at that, that dealership, I wouldn't even agree to sell it. I, if I had anybody that was on that vehicle, I'd just give them right to my manager. Yeah. You know yeah, what? No I don't it. want your thousand dollars, yeah. you know, because because you so I'm not gonna put up with any of this aggravation that's gonna be associated with selling this car. It ain't worth it. You're gonna make you're gonna make a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy thousand dollars. You're gonna pay me a measly thousand dollars. And if that customer has any issues at all, he's going to come back to me. I'm not in on that. <laughs> just There's not. so many aspects of that. And again, just post it on the internet. Maybe it's not real. My supposition is it's real and that they're trying to get that money because it's a rare car. I mean, hey, we understand the dynamics of supply and demand. This is also the most egregious dealer adjustment I've seen in a long, long time. And I wonder how, I wonder how CDJR or Stellantis feels about it. You know, they see this stuff. Like, how do they feel? Here, I'll help you with how they, they don't care. How do they feel about it? They don't care. They're going to say, oh, I hope they get the $383,000 for it because that that just means that 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 these uh, hot rods that we're building, they're really collector's items. Um, they don't, they, 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 they'd be happy that there's some poor schmuck out there that's going to pay $383,000 for that car. You want to know the difference between a schmuck and a putz? No. Okay. Be careful, the schmuck be would careful, buy that. Be the, careful. Put, the putz would negotiate the price down a little bit. But either way, they're they're both stupid as can be. 